It is raining all over the world. Good night, Facebook. Good night, everyone. Um, Karen Cecilia Cross here tonight again. Where is everybody? We are live. And I don't see a soul. Mm. Okay. This is a... Um, share. Oh, how do you do this? Good night, good night, good night. Good night, everyone who's joining us. Um, want to wait a few minutes to see if anyone will join us. Um, Good night. I, I hope everyone is dry and not wet. It has, it has a rainy, rainy, rainy time in Kingston. It has been raining for the last uh, five hours or so. Um, at at four o'clock, the road was um, overflowing with water and people were not getting through. I mean, it was just a slow moving through the traffic at four o'clock. But I hope um, everyone stays safe. I don't know where else rain is falling. The weatherman is predicting that there is going to be more. So we ought to be careful and watch out for each other. And um, be a neighbor to all of us. You know, in 1866, um, there was a guy named John Bingham. He was part of a group of people that um, wrote the U.S. Constitution. And he was the architect of the first draft of what is known as the 14th Amendment in the United States. The 14th Amendment um, guarantees you the right to citizenship once you're born in the United States or you gain that citizenship through um, the various available um, constitutional program that is there. And I always wonder... What makes, why people say America is a unique place and why America is a great um, nation. America is not great because they have um, a formidable military. America is not great because they have um, a once in a lifetime kind of constitution, which is confusing, but works for the greater good. America's greatness comes from the mere fact that if you are Chinese, if you are a, a black man and you go to live in China, you are still a black man in China. If you um, go to live in India, if you are a, a brown man, a Jamaican that leaves to go live in India, you live in India, but you are not an Indian. But if you leave Jamaica, or leave India, or leave China, and go live in America, there is a 90% chance, and all levels, that you will be known, or you can be called an American. And it's the only country in the world that guarantees that. And that is what makes America unique. Why do I bring that up? The rain done and the place get hot. I bring that up because... When Norman Manley um, formed the PMP, Norman Manley's intention was for the PMP to be this great movement, this movement that attracts people and bringing young people, farmers, teachers, nurses, civil servants. Norman was clear about those desires as to why the movement was formed. The mission, he said, of his generation was complete and that was political independence and all of that. So when Norman Manley started the PMP, he was pretty clear about that. But the unique thing that Norman Manley did in making the PMP a unique organization, just like, oh, I'm the American Constitution, America is a unique place. The thing that Norman Manley did, the one thing that makes the PMP a unique organization, and everybody has followed after that, was Norman Manley took... The power, the most sacred power within that party that he started, and he gave it to the ordinary man and the ordinary woman. 
he gave it to you, the PMP delegates. Yep, you, the ones who elected Bakramasa Mark Golden. He gave that power to you. Now Mamali was wise and smart. He didn't give it to the leaders. He didn't give it to the executive. He didn't give it to one man or one woman. He didn't give, give it to a group of two or three. He gave it to you, the PMP delegates. He gave you that power. So tonight, we are going to look at part three of how to choose a leader. Because we, are, we already established that you, the PMP delegates who elected Mark Golden, don't know how to choose a leader. And so this is part three of how to choose a leader. And in this part three, we are going to talk about how Peter Bunting, Mark Golden, Dayton Campbell, Angela Brownberg, Ian Ailes, Luther Buchanan, and all of their enablers, how they got to where we are now. We're going to talk about what they did, and we're going to talk about how they did it. And it's all because of you, the PMP delegates. So tag a PMP delegate. If you know a PMP delegate, tag them, forward this to them, let them come in because of them we are talked to. And then we want to talk to tonight. We want, we want them to hear what we have to say. Um, I want them to hear what they did and um, how they how they were um, accomplices in getting the PMP to where it's at now. And I say, so why you call them in, rope them in, I could get them on the live. I could tell them what they did. What Mark Golden and Peter Bunting and all the gang did. So I want to wrote them in and tag them and send them the live and tell them to come in because it's them do it and it's them we're talking to. So tag a, de a delegate, please, and, and let us get into it. Immediately after the 2019 challenge by Peter Bunting, um, immediately after he lost, they set about to set up a structure within the rise movement to undermine the party. And people have been talking about this undermining for a long while. Now tonight, we're going to tell you how they did it. We're going to outline it for you, what they did and how they accomplished it. So here we go. The moment they lost, they lost the race, them starting them WhatsApp group and them start talking about how them going to move forward, how them going to build a movement um, separated from the party. Mark referred to the party in the WhatsApp league as that party. Um, they started referring to their to their rise um, thing as a movement, and they came out of that with a clear idea as to how them going to move forward. Knowing that there's going to be a general elections within months. And here's what they did. They set out by first and foremost. The first thing they did was to divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Let's talk about divide and conquer. Divide and conquer is they took half the PMP base support. Half of the PMP organization. Half of the PMP people at the ground level that are responsible for our operations on election day or during election time. They bought half of them. Half of them they bought. They pay them big money. They set them up. They start businesses for them. Them fix care for them. Them pay school fees. Them do all kinds of things. And they took half of the PMP operation with them after they lost. They didn't let it go. They didn't sit it down. They took half. Who did they take? Organizers in the constituencies, people of influence in the constituencies, constituency executive, constituency chairman, constituency um, divisional leaders. They took half of them and they made them their own. So therefore, going into the election, all the PMP had was half of its workforce, half of its ground operation, because Rise United took half 
and they went about planning how to make us lose the election. Yeah. You don't have to hear it, you don't delegate, because it's going to do it. You don't have to hear it. You don't know if you elect leader, you don't know if you choose leader. You don't check out leader background and find out what leader has done before you decide that you want to make him a leader. You just go ahead, take him money, sell out your birthright, sell out your parents' birthright, and make him leader. I'm going to tell you how him sabotage the PMP. Them take half the PMP workforce, half the leadership in each in the constituencies that them target. And they targeted some constituencies. And they took that workforce. And that is the workforce that they decided they are going to use to destabilize the party, knowing that there is an election coming up soon. So that's the first thing they did. They had constituency leaders, divisional leaders, constituency executive members, most of whom are delegates, who Norman Manley entrusted with him party, who Norman Manley gave power, power for them to be able to keep PMP as a as a viable organization and build the organization from ground up and deliver votes to PMP. Norman Manley gave them that power and them sell that power to, Bo to, to Bunting and Golden. And they became kind of a, like a second party within the party working for Bunting, specifically working for Bunting. That's the first part. What was their responsibility? What was their responsibility after they took them? Separate the party. Divide the party. They got 49%. Peter Phillips got 51%. They took that 49% of leadership and ground operatives and made it their own. Give them big money. Pay them. Set them up. And prepare them. But let us back up a bit. Their task... Those leaders that they bought. The whole U.S. Uno leaders met up. Uno. When upon the constituency executive. And the divisional executive. And the divisional leaders. And the leaders in the areas. Who are responsible for de delivering PMP vote. A uno me attack. Uno. Who sold that to Peter Bunting. Let's back it up a little bit. They started the narrative before, before the, the, the election. Peter Phillips can win, the PMP can win, but they were mostly about Peter Phillips can win. They were dwelling too much about the PMP can win. They were mostly about Peter Phillips can win. They started it in the WhatsApp group, the one that I was in. That Peter Phillips can win, why I cussed them off and left. So I started with that. So once them start that narrative and then them took over the PMP leadership, it was easy sailing for them. And Uno. Uno and grateful and wicked, licky, licky delegates and leaders in constituency sold out Norman Manley and sold out the PMP to their money man. Yeah. And that's them put on the one side, I want to have them there. So they started the narrative before. Peter Phillips can't win, the PMP can't win. All of them start that narrative. So they took half the leadership of the PMP and from the grounds level. And them took on and put on one place and then give on the money and on the decide so now go and jam until on the hear from the rice boss them. So that's the first thing they did. The second thing they did was messaging. So there was the divide and rule. That's the first thing. Second thing, messaging. And they set the tone for the messaging from the beginning, from before they even lost. And after they lost, they stepped it up. The tone of messaging. PMP can't win. Peter Phillips can't win. And they look for, and them look for ways and means to undermine and, and, and this, 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 and, um, and put out them display of dissatisfaction out in the public sphere. So it was there for all to see and feel. Him have half at the ground operation. Him buy uno. Him pay for uno. Uno was bought. Like whores and prostitutes that don't work. Maybe still are. Uno sold that. Norman Manley gave it to Uno. For safekeeping for the next generation. Uno sold it out. You know. Divisional leaders. Constituency leaders. Executive. Members of the uh, of, uh, NEC members. 
Nah man Mali and trust to know with that. Nah man PJ, Michael, Porsche, Peter Phillips and trust to know with that. I will sold it out. And then buy off a and put it on one side. Then them start the message that Peter can't win. Peter Phillips can't win. The PMP now go win. The PMP can't win. Then them ramp up that message. And that message was not only about that PMP can win and Peter can. The PMP message was a clear message. Building Jamaica or building our Jamaica. Something to that effect. That is what the PMP message was. What were they doing while PMP was trying to put that message out? And when the party put a, put a message out for its election, the entire candidate roster supposed to carry that message. If you're a candidate on the People's National Party ticket, the party set the message to one, you're supposed to carry it. Now they did a little trick thing. Uno know it, you know. Uno call up a delegate them. They did a little trick thing. Partially, they made I use it. A little bit, they made I use it. Building, building our Jamaica. And the bike, the bike, the bike, the bike. So they did that. But they add new messages to that. They add sub messages and little be the bit of um, little things to add to it. Them add that to the party message of building building our Jamaica. Yeah. Um, um I think Peter Bunting had something, I wrote it down somewhere, that he had another message on the paper that he had. Um the message was uh performance is everything. So Mr. Bunting had Building your Jamaica, then him have underneath that performance is everything. Basically trying to overlap the party's message. So him take the party message and add his Rise United message to it. So sending the country double message. Sending the people double message. PMP can't win. The Edia General Secretary, it was all about the place with this full full thing. About um something about dream. I don't know, I remember what it was. Something about dream that Mark him took up himself and and um and adapted the other day about dream. Cause him seemed to be dreaming all the time. Uh we don't know where my dream about him I dream all the time. You know? So there was the, the, the PMP message which is building our Jamaica, and they added to that sub messages. The dream thing, yeah. And performance is everything by Peter Bunting, which was a subliminal message to this Peter Phillips. So let me just recap the two. First, they divided the party. They divided the ground operation, the ground troops, the people in the constituency, the people who are responsible for, the, for delivering the PMP message and the PMP votes. Them divide that and them take off. Them pay on off. Them bribe on off. On selling themselves like prostitutes. And Peter Bunting keep on there to do all of that. Then they changed the message. They added their own message to PMP message. Undermining the party's stance instead of promoting the party's message. They were adding their own message to it. Um, doing a double click confusing voters. That was what they were doing. And in doing that. The first, their first intent, which is to, which is to make sure that people don't go or vote because people, PMP can't win and Peter Phillips can't win. Remember, you know, that's their first thing. Peter Phillips can't win. The PMP can't win. So therefore, people must not go or vote because we can't win. And this, and this is where the meat of the matter is. And I want you to hear me clearly. Uno, delegates, me attack. Uno, I want you to hear me clearly. Oh, you know, aid and abetted these people to make the PMP lose all these seats. They targeted a number of seats. They targeted people's seat. Yes. They target, targeted Vars down in West Milan. They targeted Vars down in West Milan. They had paid operatives on Facebook dancing with money and then them bunting shirt and them bunting thing dancing. Paid operatives who have admitted, admitted publicly that their job, their job was to make sure that Dwayne Vaz don't win. And when him lose, 
they celebrated. They did. So, divide and rule. Mess up the messaging. And the people them, who know delegates, where them sell, or were selling a soul to the PA, to, to mountain, who know, went out and make sure some PAP people don't win. On the target doing Vaz. On had operatives down there who get money to make sure tell people not to vote for Dwayne Vaz. To tell people not to vote for Dwayne Vaz. That's what Bunting did. And the evidence is there. On the need for God, no. Who no dunce delegate when God no nothing. Who no man man then trusted his party to and tell him who no must choose wisely and to sell the party to them criminals here. And them have particular people who are responsible for making sure that Dwayne Vaz don't win. And they rejoiced. Claiming them a PMP, you know. PMP people who said about PMP go up on Facebook and in them tick and tack at them, whatever it is them do. Rejoicing that they made Dwayne Vaz lose. Because that was Bunting's instruction. The money and the instruction and the messaging. So the target Dwayne Vaz. They targeted Lisa Anna. And as I said before, we're going to have one big hell of a excitement live. About two weeks from now. Maybe three. To deal with the matter of the Lisa Anna thing. Mm -hmm. They targeted Dwayne Vaz. Hired people to make sure tell people not to vote for Dwayne Vaz. Not to go, go vote. And them hired people with influence in the communities. To go out and say them nah vote for Dwayne Vaz. And you know somebody... If I should go out in a my lane at Wilmot Drive there, so and just start an election, man, I said, nah, vote. I mean, I'm not with PMP. You know what? People wouldn't vote as a result of that. Do you know I mean? People would not come out to vote if I did that. So they hired influential people to go out in the communities and be on Facebook and social media and, 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 um, and WhatsApp messaging and, and what next one name? IG, whatever. They hired them. To tell PMP people that them now vote for the inverse. Me now vote for him for lose. Me for go away. It's a PMP people, you know. I mean, I talk about other voting PMP people who are living in a constituent and just vote, you know. Me talk about people with position. People who are group leaders, group chairmen, group secretaries, delegates. Collect up the money and I do big dance on Facebook and I fling up the money up in the year. But Bunting said, come get them to make sure Dwayne Vaz don't win. Mm hmm Them target Dwayne Vaz. My God in heaven. They targeted Lisa Hanna as well. And we're going to get down to that very soon. In a couple of weeks. Messaging, divide and rule and set the people that you divided and pick your part and set them to go tell PMP people not to vote for PMP. Your message was out there loud and clear. Yes, Peter Bunting, Mark Golden, walking around. Mm. The third thing they did, the third thing they did, had to do with them attire, them clothes, because the message came with optics it was like it was like um um may i say this but you must also look at what me doing so they had several messages you know i saw this video where bunting was saying i know over and some people come up and say strong i hear him pan. i know over and some people say strong so that seemed like that was also another message that they were doing that the pmp did not sanction or the pmp was not promoting they were doing them own messaging and they did it right on our nose and they did it because they know they could do it and get away with it they did it of all the risers were wearing the, the rice candidates they were wearing black black um black polo shirts plain white polo shirts plain 
nothing upon them. Dayton Campbell, every walk, him walk. Him have a group of people with him in a them rise shirt with them rise logo. Come campaigning. And that fool, that fool stopped in his own constituency asking some people to cast a vote for him. And one young person said to him, PMP now go in. I don't know what the general secretary of the PMP said when the young person said that. The general secretary of the PMP said, yeah, things it kind of rough, yeah. I don't think we're going to win the election neither, but I like win my seat. The general secretary of the PMP, he never general secretary yet. But, you know, he might promote an idea that we can't win. And Peter Phillips can't win. He might promote that idea, but he might ask other people to vote for him. What if we see the, see the trend and see what's going on? Hmm? Hanover, strong. Hanover, strong. Bunting was it? What was the, um, the, the master, you know? Like him had a sound, man. Like him had a, um, yeah, yeah, like I had, had a puppet here, master. So, yeah, that's Hanover, strong. Hanover, strong. And them rice shirt, them own logo, them own songs, them own message. While PMP people sit down at them constituency and listen to them. Listen to the argument that PMP can win. The whole of them. Go out there and spread that argument. Say PMP cannot win. Peter Phillips cannot win. Hired PMP people to and give them money on the sell on the soul to make sure that they go out go tell people that PMP can win. I wanna wait a little for deal with the Lisa and a situation, but I want to tell you this. We don't go down a cent and yet. I was soon going to send and go find out what I go on. But Peter Bunting, Peter Mercat Bunting, sent out operatives in South East St. Anne, Central Westmoreland. They never mess much with Wickham. Because, I don't know, I think they thought that Wickham would have been uh, um, okay, so they never, you know. Mess much with him. They went down into St. James and they sent out people to undermine Harton. They sent out people to undermine Harton, Vaz, Lisa, and they gave them a different message. Take the money. Make sure to tell PMP people so they don't vote. Because if you tell people so they don't vote, then they don't have a vote either. And that is what they did. How did they accomplish that? I would not waste a whole time tonight about that. How did they accomplish that? They accomplished that because they bought out a couple of people in the constituencies, in the divisions, leadership in the various division. Oh, can you, as PMP, say your divisional leader, say your constituency leader, your executive, oh, can you be walking around and telling people that PMP can't win? How oh, could you possibly believe that you're going to win and you are telling people say PMP can't win? The youth in the East and West Berlin say, Luther Buchanan, stop representing people. That's why I'm loose. That's what the young fellow said, Akim. But Luther Buchanan not only lose because he stop represent people. He lose because he was one was a worker. I said, who them can't win? I can't win nothing. Them can't win nothing. Phillips can't win nothing. Phillips can't win nothing. That was theme attitude, like them, the truck man that he is. Phillips can't win nothing. Ah, well, then, bring the argument. Can't win nothing. Who vows him for lose? Luther Buchanan. Danny Buck Nevio. Noel Monteith Nevio. And that fool lose PG seat. Walk around and tell people, say, Peter can't win nothing. Them can't win. Them can't win nothing. He never said PMP. He said, them can't win nothing. 
Them can't win nothing. Eat at them. They don't know if you run the party. Ray, Tay. Bunting was so busy coordinating that. And that is what he was coordinating. You know? Because the plan was for them to control the party fully. Them needed some people who are solid, authentic PMP to lose. And then the rise candidates to win. But Jesus flipped the script on them. <laughs> Jesus flipped the script on them. They needed for some solid PMP seats to lose. They needed Lisa to lose. They needed Vars to lose. They needed those, they needed Arton to lose. Whoever the candidate was for, for South St. James. And Mark went to campaign with him. Mark was running a different campaign than the PMP campaign of 2020. Mark Golden, the man that only elected, one of the PMP delegates, was sell out on a vote for 15 and 20,000, 25,000. Uno, all wicked, licky, licky delegate. Mark Golden. Who uno think is a nice guy. And let us pause for one second after that. Mark Golden is not a nice guy. Mark Golden is not a nice guy. And we tell you, we told you, night after night, day after day, we were on social media telling uno that Mark Golden is not a nice guy. I'm not calling my Mark Golden a, a serial killer. But you know those serial killers? Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer was one of the nicest guys. All them college roommates and everybody say he was a nice guy. Very nice guy. Congenial and helpful and a, a nice guy. Not trouble nobody. Yet, he was jogging women, killing them, and then raping them when they're dead. The nice guy. That he was Jeffrey Dahmer. I would not say Mark doing all of that. But Mark Golden is one of the sneakiest person there is on God's earth. Sneakiest. Just tell you one thing, and you think him is a nice guy? He's not a nice guy. That guy is not, not a nice guy. Oh no, the delegates of the PMP elected Mark Golden. The delegates of South St. Andrew also elected him to represent them. But it's like the delegates all across the country don't understand what their responsibilities are and don't understand why the man delegate the Norman Manly Party. Mark Golden never did anything for PMP. Never made any sacrifices for PMP. Never had any loyalty for PMP. Was never seen anywhere doing anything for the PMP. But Omar Davis, who was the finance minister and was busy cuddling up to the big money guys them to make sure them have more money and he made them a friend and that's how he brought in brought in mark golden so when he brought in mark golden and he brought him down to south saint Andrew, and him and mark golden become friends and him say come sit up on the executive man come come i want you my executive and the idiot delegates him down to south saint Andrew don't know they don't know that they should look at omar and say what the hell are you doing this is not how this works but they don't know they don't want to know either. So they allow Omar Davis to bring Mark Golden into the constituency and put him on the executive. He has done nothing for the PMP. You know what? PMP people have worked for how much years for PMP are run up and down for the election day. Who not make it to executive yet? You know how many PMP whose family died, got sick, worked this party for years Year after year, election after election, and I know them can't even reach a doorway at the executive meeting yet. But Omar Davis took Mark Golden, the, the white man whose parents owned slaves, and then put him by the executive. And one of the delegates of the South St. Andrew loved it because they don't understand what exactly was in a role as Norman Manley delegates. They don't know to choose leaders, they don't know to choose executives. It's like they don't know nothing. Uno just love the delegate thing so that when time comes for vote, Uno can get her money and vote. That's another thing. So Mark Golden become a part of Omar executive. And then Omar wants to leave. And Omar spent a good portion of his time wanting to leave, convincing Mark to stay 
and take over the seat. I convinced the white man who never did anything for PMP, who has never done anything for PMP. Now have no loyalty and commitment to PMP. And he convinced him to stay and take PMP seat. And when an authentic, loyal, hardworking, committed PMP challenge him, one of the delegates of South St. Andrew shut it down. I only let Mark Golden over Colin Camber. And I'm not saying Colin Camber is a, was deserving. But, I mean, if I had a choice, I would have chosen Colin Campbell if I had a vote. For the mere fact that him is an authentic PMP who will sit up and down and do stuff for PMP. Don't you think that that would have been a good decision? But no. Uno elect Mark. And then after he elect him to come lead South St. Andrew, Uno went ahead and elect him to be leader of the PMP. Not knowing all that he has done to undermine the People's National Party, Imam Peter Bonnie. Mark Golden was out there, so we'll go back over to the election now, in terms of what they did. Mark Golden was out there running a separate campaign. Mark Golden was out there campaigning for candidates that supported the Rise United movement. Those he was um, um, supporting, him and Peter Bunting. They gave money to only candidates that supported the Rise United movement. When the party asked them for money during that election in 2020, they didn't get the party no money. Them said them not have no money. Them not have no money if you get the party. Them said the party now going away. The party are going to lose. May I repeat what them said to you? May I make up them story? May I repeat what them say? Them can't give no money to that. Can't give no money to that. We're going to lose. Um, party now going away. The Jamaican people not motivated. But look for Uno. Did I talk about Jamaican people not motivated to vote for PMP? Look at Uno now. Huh? Those were the language they were using to the party when the party asked them for money. They did not give the party a cent. They took that money. They gave Fenton. They gave Angela. Them give Fagan. And them give um, Ian Eels. Them give Luther. Them give for them rice candidates the money. And for them rice candidates was running a totally different campaign. Now them black and them white polo shirts without anything on it doing songs about Hanover strong Manchester strong um said whatever whatever strong while the party was on the campaign to say building our Jamaica and but Bunting was putting underlining messages performance matters true and shades true and shades talk about performance matters and those are some of the things that they did to undermine the party and cost us the election and greatly, greatly damage Norman Manley party. And Uno, remember, you know, this is a discussion about PMP delegates, you know, Uno, the choices Uno make and Uno choose leaders, you know. We only give Uno the information, you know. We're talking to Uno about what the things are going to cause, because there is cause and there is effect. To every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And everything that you PMP delegates did from November 2020 till now has brought home in a real way the grave and colossal mistakes that you made in electing this man over Lisa Anna. And we are bringing it home to Uno because me now I'm going to forget what Uno did. And what Uno did coincide and now collide with what they did. So now it seemed like there was some kind of great vast conspiracy to make sure that the PMP lose. And we now know, based on being out there on the street, we now know that it was true. Bunting gave money to people in Westmoreland to make sure say Vaz lose. The young woman was on social media, boasting about it. PMP delegate boasting about it. She boasted about it all over Westmoreland. Everywhere we turn, we heard about her boast. Me, I gotta make sure Vaz lose. She never an executive. She never an PMP executive. A bunting buy her out and she fly up money to make Vaz lose. 
hmm? Incent James to hold for shenanigans to make sure art lose. Cause him not with us. The argument from St. James was that Uno was saying, the risers, Uno too sure art with boy and art not with we. Art not with we. Luther Buchanan, you're going to pay a price. Remember those words that Mark used? We're going to pay a price. You, Luther Buchanan, you're going to pay a price. We don't know if him with we. We don't know if him with we. Hmm. Ian Hills, now vice president and seeking the seat for Central Westmoreland that Vaz lost. Ian Hills, you were an enabler for that too. Ian Hills was an enabler for that, but it was a bonding operation. But Ian Hills was an enabler as well, because he knew about it. We're not a PMP. They're not a PMP. Them is Rise United movement trying to beat up and kill the PMP and using the PMP for them own benefit. They have destroyed everything that was sacred about the PMP. The man them went out in an election. The man them went out in an election and set up people to campaign against PMP candidates. The man them went out in an election doing a different message from what the party sent out. The man then went out in an election spreading other things that the party wasn't spreading and they were doing it and getting away with it. Because they knew nobody wasn't watching, nobody wasn't paying attention, nobody wasn't seeing what they were doing. I don't know how we feel united with them. I don't know how we, me, Karen Cross, who them said them expel and we're going to deal with that one day, see? Don't be, don't, don't know all the asses. Me, Karen Cross, could I never sit down and unite with them there. Never. Two days before the election, I went out. I was over in St. Mary helping Dr. Guy. All of Islington and Baka Sudan, Sport Road and them places. Family. My family up there through my daughter. And... I said, I go up there and Dr. Guy come here, so up the week. I mean, if you tell Dr. Guy, I just go up there. And then I check Dr. Guy's office and give him an, an assessment. And oh, when I up there, I call him on the phone and tell him when I pick up and make him make, him make the adjustments we needed to make. And driving into Port Maria that day when I did that video, it was like one of those things where somebody like a Maureen, remember what I said to me, say, crosses, go up there and go. Tell me what the temperature is like. And I come out, I park the car and I come out of the car. And I walk up and down, just walking up and down around the car and looking around. And just lean up against the car and I felt it. I felt it in the air that there was no motivation on the part of PMP people to go out go vote. I felt it. It was burning. I felt it. I felt it. There was something going on and them not. Them not there. Them just not there. Them mind not there. Them heart not there. Them soul not there. And it was not only just the money. Because there are many places where the money that the laborers were giving out. In Westmoreland, the money never made no difference. There was very little money. And the very little money was for young people who don't know nothing about, about politics. And them sell them votes. And when you run the election, you factor that in. Them not included now who you're looking for to vote for you. Those young people, those new young voters. Them not included. You're looking for your same voters, them that you got the last time. And then try to pick up some more. So them not included in it. But there was it. In the air. That whole feeling that PMP people not coming out to vote. And it was there because them people have planned plant the argument that PMP can't win. Them out there championing them own seat. Asking people to vote for them. And I tell people that PMP can't win when they were asked. Them I tell people that so PMP can't win. Mm. Luther Buchanan did it. Eels did it. Peter Bunting did it. Dayton Campbell did it. Fortunate for them, neither Angela nor Fenton didn't do that. Mm. Of all the rice candidates... Fenton Ferguson was the only one that was carrying the party message straight. Never count all of them foolishness away them that do. 
he must carry in the party message straight. We don't investigate what Angela Bromberg did yet, but my guess is she probably did carry the party message straight. Too. But no, not the rest of the man there. Not the man there. They must do a different messaging. They must oil in palms and setting up people to go tell people that they must not vote for Dwayne Vaz and they must not vote for Ian, for Orton. I don't remember if it's Ian is his name, but Orton. Let me not say Ian because I know Ian Orton, but Orton. And they must lose. And a massive operation on Lisa Anna, which we're going to talk about. Because half the story has never been told. Now we're going to talk about that, as I said, the next two to three weeks. Because that is a whole different kettle of fish. Divide and rule. Then divide the parties, base operation, the runners, the indoor agents, the outdoor agents, the upper the operatives on the, on the ground on election day. Those, half of those were bought out and paid to sabotage the PMP. They never even knew said them sabotage the PMP. How the hell did they get to be executive members and leaders in our constituency and them don't know when a sabotage operation is being brought out on the party that them represent? They don't know. In my own constituency, those were the quarrel about Lisa and the burger truck. Asking them for money to help them. And all them tell them is that to the cow. You know, Sir Patrick, Patrick Cow, you know, say, we never ever said that. Not a person at whose land. Patrick Cow, you know, Sir Patrick Cow, we remember we're going to have money still. Them get up money to tell people that Patrick Cow win. No, not in a million years I would say that to anybody. And I did that video encouraging PMP people to go out go vote. It was too late. It was too late. It has seeped into the psyche of the general voting population, particularly PMP people, that PMP can't win. The people them down a gully road down a St. James on a mobby told us that. But man, the best PMP can't win anyone. You know, and then man, they have the money and Ray Ray, blah, blah. But the people of Flankers, them wasn't buying that. But the man, them seep it into the psyche of the PMP people. And we're not talking about how oh, labor right run money. Labor right never run all that much amount of money. I was amazed that the whole money thing wasn't a big operation as we we'll make it out to be. The labor them spend money where they need to win in their areas and some flip seats, some purple seats that they thought that they needed to win. They spent money, but the operation to destabilize PMP candidates was all yours. Peter Burkett Bunting, Mark Golden, Dayton Campbell, Ian Eels. That operation I'm flipping it over. I'm going to flip it over. Tonight is just the beginning of the reveal of what you guys have done. We're still out there. We're still getting more as to what you did. We're still finding the people that you pay money. The people them that you have at the constituency level. We want to give money and just simply say to them, Boy, I was going to do that because PMP can't win. What kind of message is that? Boy, you know, if 100,000, you know, 100,000, 100,000, yeah? But you know him can't win, right? You know him can't win. That's a Peter Phillips I'm referring to. Because it was never ever about the PMP. It was always about Peter Phillips. You know, keep saying him can't win. Him can't win, which is Peter Phillips, not the PMP. You know, wasn't promoting that. You know, wasn't promoting the party, but you know, run on the party's platform. And Mark Golden, Bakramasa's son, Whose parents came here with slaves got a prime. When we talk about prime, rib prime. Yeah, man, rib prime stick PMP seat in South St. Andrew. He got that seat by doing absolutely nothing for PMP. That's why he can't be so. Because he's an all around idiot. Him just come and join the executive and Omar telling for company executive and in company executive and Omar giving big work in a government and he make more money from fee money and then Omar want to leave and Omar spent about two years convincing him. Two years before Omar left, left Omar wanted to leave him. But Omar spent an additional two years just convincing Mark to stay. 
That's what Omar spent the next two years doing, uh, the last two years of his, of his, um, MP ship doing, you know, convincing Mark to stay, convincing Mark to take the seat. And one of the delegates of South St. Andrew elected him over an authentic, bona fide, loyal PMP who have made sacrifices for this party. And it's like, who not believe in those things. And who himself has made some sacrifice for the party. Who know the same delegates, who know, who know make a lot of sacrifice for the party. But it's like, Something in our system we don't understand that Norman Manley gave you know, this power because he trusted you know he could have done otherwise. He could have said the leader of the party must the next leader the, the present leader must choose the next leader. Norman Manley could have said five people must get together and choose the next leader. But no, Norman Manley. The wise and articulate and bright, forward-thinking Norman Manley. He didn't do that. He said, no, I'm giving it to you here. Uno take it. Uno sit down and assess and figure out who is the best person right now. The best among you. The brightest among you. The more dedicated among you. The most committed among you. The most loyal among you. Which one of you is deserving to lead this movement. Which one are you is not only going to lead the movement. But which one are going to help me win my PD. In combat down to that you know. In choosing your leader you know. You're going to bring him out. For him name is going to ring out an election day. And if him name can't bring out your voters. You're dead. But you elected a man. Who can't bring out the voters. Well you can't bring out the voters in the first place. You. The delegate. Who no matter. talk. But you can't bring out no voters. What does the one you're nothing from or no? And then you know, let a man who can't bring out none either. So you know, set on a self on a on a course where you're going to destroy, totally destroy everything that Norman Manley meant this to be. I don't want people to remain quiet. I don't want people to shut up. I don't want people to stop talk. I don't want people to stop resist. I don't want people to come united. What's wrong with you? No, seriously, what's wrong with Uno? Where Uno no understand this? I want to explain to me. A comrade in St. James pulled me one side and said to me, selling the market. Said, yeah, she pulled me one side. And she said to me, say, come with Karen. You know what say? Me that wonder if I suck my go on between you and you and the man them, if you and them have some some personal thing. But you see when me read the WhatsApp link, something where you give me, you see when me read it, me say, no, sir. Me said, Jesus God. Mm -mm. Me said, I you know, say, boy, may I tell you. She wanted me, she fought for my boy for my goal and regret it. But she can't bring herself to do it. I mean, now nah, make sure get her with it. Me said, say it. You voted for him, didn't you? And she said, yes, you know, the bit. Yeah, I went with him name. They did come to me and, you know, I mean, I said, yeah. How you feel about it now? Tell me. How you feel about having voted for Mark Golden mm. over Lisa Anna? Lord, me say every day, every day. He says, since me read really something and I watch on something on the, on the Facebook and see how the man that behave out there, see how the man that go on and I run with everybody that go on like say. These are her words, you know, me not making this up. Thank God me have people around me. You saw me see the man that go on like they don't want a body who never support them, round them, and the man that mash up the things. So when I see that, me I tell you, Miss Carrie, me I tell you, me I tell you, Miss Carrie, my belly hurt me. May I wait, man, may I wait for the next time. Say, I wait for the next time. You go and wait for the next time. The next time, that when you come. You need to go into your constituency, go back to your division and talk to people about these things. Make them understand that their responsibility to the People's National Party as a delegate is an enormous one. Enormous responsibility. The whole only get delegate, delegate status just for no particular reason. Because we're not the MP good, or because we're farming on one group, and ray ray blah blah, and then it means nothing to you. Know, nothing. We we'll just take it and do as you know, please. And the man them went about in a systematic way, undermined the party, and caused us to lose those seats that we had. Because that was their intent. Their intent was for us to lose some of the seats that we had. Because them figure them mind them couldn't lose some. Them couldn't, them couldn't lose some, them couldn't lose Fitz, them couldn't lose Natalie, them couldn't lose Peter, um, Philip Paulwell, them couldn't lose Peter Phillips, 
them couldn't lose them there. But them figure. And they figured rightly. Based on how the, the electoral cycle runs. And how the, the thing look. They figured that if they beat down enough of, of um, the St. James guy. And beat down enough of Vaz. That would give them the edge. Because then they would have Luther. And they would have Peter B. And they would have Mark. And they would have Angela. And they would have Fenton. I don't go to St. Thomas yet. And St. Thomas is my stamping ground. We have a huge fan club out of St. Thomas. Big up Western St. Thomas. Big up Eastern St. Thomas. See the initial? Mar Mirage. I did it. No can't say I did it. Big it up. Biggest fan clubs is over St. Thomas. And them, we dying to find out. I am dying to find out from the people of Eastern St. Thomas. After they gave Fenton Ferguson that resounding victory after the whole dead baby thing, and he went back there and reorganized himself and built back his constituency, and they gave him a resounding victory in 2016. I would like to ask them what happened, why they didn't show up for him this time around. I would like them to tell me. Hmm? Man, them organized people give them money to destabilize Dwayne Vaz and to destabilize Orton. The destabilization of, destabilization of Lisa Hanna is quite an intriguing thing. It's like something out of um, a political thriller. It's only like we need a Harvey Weinstein to produce something like that. I never knew that these things could happen in Jamaica. I never knew that men were so devious and wicked that they would, they would want to see the party lose in for them to get power. And Uno the delegate give them the power because Uno no know. Uno fool, fool. Uno into the money. The fifteen and the twenty thousand dollars to sell out in a votes. And a party out of power. And the day they are talking about you know, suffer. Bro God is going to make you suffer more. Because Uno is responsible for that. And I'm not going to stay much longer. I want to tell you two things. One, the Lisa Hannah thing I'm going to deal with within the next two weeks. I just thought about it in my head. The next two weeks, we're going to talk about Southeast St. Anne in particular. Next week, I'm going to leave that as a surprise for you. Because you need to know. You're the delegate of Norman Man, the party, and you need to know. You need to learn how to choose leaders. We need to know the people that present themselves to you. Know. We need to look at them record. We need to look at them service, them loyalty, them commitment, them sacrifice. We need to know. And if we don't know those things as delegate, we don't have no business being delegate. If Lisa and a burger truck was such a big deal that you, as a leader for a division, an entire PMP division, carry feelings for that burger truck thing to the extent that that is your sole reason for not il voting and electing that Lisa Anna. That is your sole reason. Belly got burger. Belly got long got burger for your cow for your grand pit and man burger for your cow for your dog. And you vexed vexing that. Now you know, support Lisa. And you let Mark Golden. And this is what we get on our ball. So we're going to talk about that. Secondly, we are going to be on the road and in every constituency. God's willing and the finances there. We're going to be everywhere. And the PMP resistance will not stop until we get to the bottom of all of this. And when we do, we're going to share it all with you. We have videos, we have recordings, or we got lots of stuff. And we're going to share it as soon as we are done with all 14 constituencies. There's no hurry. PMP has to be, has to rebuild. But in order to rebuild and in order to unite, there has to be a reckoning. All truths must be laid bare. Reckoning must take place. People must take responsibility for their actions and that includes you, the delegates. Peter Bunting will never take 
responsibility for his actions. Neither will Mark Golden. Because Mark Golden is not a decent, nice guy. Far from it. Don't know if he was a decent, nice guy. I'm going to pack him back tomorrow morning and say goodbye. I'm going to take it. I'm going to say if I can build it back. I wish you no well. If he wants to do something decent and nice, that's a decent and nice thing for him to do. Angela Bromberg is not a decent and nice person. We're going to deal with she. And the role she played in all of this. So I'm not the whole and asses. No, don't rush me because the whole and rushing me. But we're going to deal with her. We're going to deal with she. We're going to deal with Dayton Campbell. Oh, we're going to deal with him. We're going to deal with them. All of them and the role they played. Individual, specific roles that they played in all of this. Everything from 2019 till now. The role they played. And you know, I don't want to, I don't want to make the thing about me because it's not about me and I don't talk about the things that affect me. I really don't. But a lot of comrades ask me on the road about the whole expulsion thing. And my simple answer to all of them is, and some of them, some of you watching, my simple answer is and still remains that them start a process, may I follow that process. And I'm going to tell you about it and the role that Angela Brownberg played in that particular process. And I'm going to talk to you about how Southeast St. Anne and the role that Angela Brownberg, Paul Berg, Peter Bunting played in that. There, I'm going to have it. Yeah, I'm going to call upon the name. I'm going to call upon the name, the whole of the name. I'm going to call upon the whole of the name. I'm going to tell the people, because the people need to know, the delegates and the People's National Party need to know what kind of scoundrels you all are. They need to know what kind of ningering Uno is. They need to know how untrustworthy Uno are all of Uno. They need to know just how disloyal Uno is to Norman Manly Party and to country. And I'm going to tell them. And I'm going to know. And we're going to hope. And we're going to pray that the delegates of the People's National Party finally start to get an understanding as to how to choose a leader. Thank you for joining me. Good night. God bless you. God bless your family. Please keep the children safe. Thank you.